Good evening. I'm Pastor David Miller Sutton, Senior Pastor of Christian Enrichment Center. We're streaming live from 1237 Sepulveda Boulevard in the beautiful city of Torrance. Thank you for watching Christian Enrichment TV, and we're so glad that you have joined us tonight. It is important for us to understand that the favor of God lies in his principles, and his principles are only found in his word. We invite you to partner with us, and you can do so by visiting our website at www.christianenrichment.org and click the link Support Our Ministry. Thank you again for tuning in to Christian Enrichment TV, and remember, it's all good in the kingdom of God. Let's go forward with our Bible confession here at CEC. We have a Bible confession that we confess before the word of God. And we're going to ask you to write it down. And before you open your Bible to study God's word, just do this Bible confession along with us. Amen? Amen. This is my holy Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can accomplish whatever it says I can through the power that works in me and for me to the glory of God. Amen. Our text tonight is found Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 16, 17, and 18. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 16. 17 and 18. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. You may be seated. Continuing our transforming your wardrobe a lesson from last week. Our text last week was Ephesians 6, 13 through 15. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And this week's text, in addition to all, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our subject tonight is transforming your wardrobe. And our thought is your outer garment must reflect your inner change. Your outer garment must reflect your inner change. Tonight we're going to continue to explore the spiritual dress code for every believer. I'm not talking about how long a woman's dress should be in the church or whether or not women should wear pants uh, to church or, or men wearing flip-flops and shorts to church. I'm talking about what every believer should be clothed in spiritually. Every believer should have a wardrobe on. And tonight's wardrobe, we're talking about the armor. In last week's text, Paul reminded us to put on the whole armor of God in order to stand ready 
against the enemy. But as I said uh, last week, before you can put on the whole armor, <laughs> you must remove some of your outer garments <laughs> to allow your armor to fit properly. And when I talked about outer, your outer garments, we were speaking of you must take off anger. You must take off wrath. You must take off uh, uh, malice. You must take off filthy communications out of your mouth. You must take off lying and blaspheming and any such things that are connected with your old self. What is your old self? Your sinful nature, the old sin nature of man. Before you can put on the whole armor of God, you got to pull off all that stuff. Amen? Amen, amen. So uh, this week, we're, we will continue to check our battle clothing to ensure that we are properly dressed for spiritual warfare. I need you to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not fighting uh, individuals, but we must learn how to take the face off of the individual that, we, that is standing before us. Because there is a spirit that moves people, whether good or bad. There is a spirit that moves people. And we must understand that there are two spirits working in the earth. There's evil in Satan and God in good. For the Bible declares that all good things come down from the Father of lights. Last week we explored having girded your loins with truth or having tightened the band of truth around your midsection or your core. Uh, uh, the armor that protects your core is truth and integrity. Uh, truth and integrity. And it is tightened even further with courage. Uh, last week we talked about truth and integrity is the spine or the core of your walk with Jesus Christ because it is the first thing the world uses to judge your profession. Anytime you start saying that you love God or you are born again, people want to, they start judging how you live your life. Whether you walk in truth, whether you walk in integrity, whether you have the courage in the midst of all your friends or all your foes to make a stand for Jesus Christ. That's how they judge you. Amen. Hey man, you can go to a party and 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 somebody see you uh, uh, with a a, a, a non-alcoholic drink, and the first thing they will say because they don't know it's non-alcoholic, the first thing they'll say is, "I thought you were saved." That's why the Bible tells us, "Don't let your good be evilly spoken of." And if you know that you're going to be in a situation where your, your virgin daiquiri could look like a real daiquiri, because people don't really know that it don't have no alcohol in it, but you, know, you shouldn't find yourself in a place that you have to explain what you're doing. <laughs> I know some of y'all looking at me funny and say, well, Pastor, when I like to go out, you know, I like to have a virgin daiquiri. It's okay. It's okay, just know the environment in which you're eating in. Okay. Amen. Just know, just know the environment. You know, if you if you know all your friends visit that restaurant, the first thing they're gonna say, Yeah, I saw you slip up and you know, take another drink out like you used to. That used to be your favorite drink. No, shun the very appearance of evil, the Bible declares that we should shun the very appearance of evil. Amen? So truth and integrity is the spine or the core of your walk with Jesus Christ because it is the first thing the world uses to judge your profession. Your courage uh, uh, to openly keep God's principles in the midst of temptation is the driving force behind your relationship with God. Your courage... I know it's hard sometimes that when you when you when you're making a transition from a, a, a carnality into spirit. It you know the 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 war of the flesh. It want to do what it want to do when it want to do it. But 
the courage to stand in the midst of temptation and say, for God I live, for God I did. Satan, you're not going to overtake me with this temptation because I believe that I'm free from this and I'm bound no more. That's courage. Amen? Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, next we explored the breastplate of righteousness or an upright heart, uh, a heart that is sober-minded, compassionate, and loving. Uh, the breastplate is a guard against accusations we learned last week uh, uh, and charges of Satan before the throne of God. See, what Satan will do is get you to trip up, make a, make a mistake, and then go accuse you before God. He's the one that tempted you to do it, but then he going to go, God, see, God, look, look, look. See, they, they weak as water. They ain't got nothing. They, ain't, they don't really love you like they say they do because all I had to do is throw this at them, and they tripped up. He's an accuser of the brethren. Amen? Amen. So uh, 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 the breastplate is a protection against all condemnation. Uh, and the final point last week was having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We discovered that the word of God gives peace to distressed minds because it answers all bad news with good news. That's what the gospel is, good news. I was once blind, but the good news is now I see. I was once bound, but the good news is, now I'm free. And the word of God answers every bad news question. If a man die, shall he live again? Well, he that believeth on me, though he, uh, 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 though he, he leave this place, he never sees death. He never sees death. That's what Jesus says. Oh. Man. So the question was asked, if a man dies, shall he live again? Well, Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die, but pass through death into life eternal. Oh, so you mean I don't have to worry about dying? No, uh-uh, because I passed through death. That's good news. That's good news. That eternal life lives in me right now. I don't have to die to get it. Something wrong if you if if, if you die and if you wait until you die to get eternal life, you you might end up somewhere else. You're gonna be eternal, but somewhere else. <laughs> oh God! Uh, instead of uh, 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 only pointing out the damnable things that causes one to be separated from God, the word also directs the way through Jesus Christ for you to have peace with God, peace in God, and the peace of God. So tonight we're going to explore the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Write that down, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. We've already talked about uh, 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 the band girding our loins with truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, and uh, shodding our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But tonight we're going to talk about the other three, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. The shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Let's start with the shield of faith. The shield of faith is your faith in God as your father and creator of all things. For the Bible declares, he that comes to God must first believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So before, you know, the beginning of faith is believing in God. You got to believe first. You, it, 
You cannot have faith without believing in God. <laughs> so a lot of folks go around and say, well, I'm a believer, but their lifestyle don't, don't, don't match up to what they say they believe in. And the shield of faith is your faith, your faith in God as your father and creator of all things. Uh, the next thing is uh, your faith uh, 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 is in Jesus as the redeemer of your soul. First, you believe God, God the Father, creator of all things. Then you, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the redeemer of your soul. Pastor, you mean I got to believe in God? He that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Well, how can I diligently seek him? Well, he set up a process through his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So now, and then Jesus gave his life for the remission of our sin. So through Jesus Christ, his, through his death, now he is the redeemer. He is the one that redeemed us out of the hand of the enemy and brought us back into relationship with the Father through his blood. So now my, I have faith in Jesus Christ as my redeemer. So I believe God who is the father and creator of all things, I, I now, I, I, I'm coming through the process of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, who through his bloodshed, my sins have been remitted. Now, the father no longer holds my sins against me because of the action that Jesus performed on the cross, which gave me access back to him. Now I can go to him and say, Abba. <laughs> I'm no longer an enemy, now I'm family. But it only happened through who? Jesus Christ, amen, amen. That's a good place to give God some praise right there. That's a good place to give God some praise. Hmm, hmm. So uh, 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 the shield of faith is your faith in God as your father and creator of all things, uh, faith in Jesus Christ as the redeemer of your soul, and your faith in the Holy Spirit as your comforter, your helper, and the sanctifier of your soul. Whoa, that's, 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 that's pretty heavy, uh, Pastor. That's pretty heavy. So the shield of faith, these three components are all wrapped up in the shield? Yes. Your faith in God as your father and creator of all things. Your faith in Jesus Christ as the redeemer of your soul for the work he did on the cross. And then your faith in the Holy Spirit as your comforter, your helper, and the sanctifier of your soul. What the Holy Spirit does, he when you go to uh, uh, the, uh, to the extreme of your natural ability, he comes in with the super. And he adds the super to your natural. That's, what, that's how he helps you. He's not the doer. He's not the doer. Let's get that straight. I hear a lot of believers talk, well, the Holy Spirit has to do this, or God just got, no, that's what the Holy, that's who the Holy Spirit is. He, the spirit of truth, will help you He's not, you're the doer. He helps you do. When you come to your limit, his super kicks in. And then he, he's the comforter. For Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'm going to send you another comforter because I got to get up out of here. I got to go to my daddy. I got to get back to my place that I left to come and do what I did down here. Now I got to go, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless in the midst of your storm the comforter is always or the holy spirit he is always there to tell you you can do it 
Come on, get up, get up, shake yourself, strap your boots on, and let's go on through. I'm giving you the strength. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said that the anxiety of death was on Jesus and his sweat was like drops of blood. And he, Jesus cried out and said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But then he turned the flesh over to the spirit man and the spirit man said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And the Bible declares that after Jesus prayed that prayer, God sent ministering angels to do what? To strengthen him or to help him get over the hump of that cross that was before him. Every one of us got a cross to bear. And we need to, those ministering angels to, you know, we look at that cross and, you know, when we walking close to it or we about a thousand yards away from it, that cross look, look like this. But the closer we get to it, it'd be like, whoo, whoo, and they're going to nail my hands to that thing. Whoo-wee. Uh, I wonder if there's an out, you know, is there a chicken exit somewhere that we could just jump out of line and, and go on down, go through the, no, nevertheless, the Holy Spirit said, no, come on, we got this. I got you. You're not doing it alone. I'm going to help you. And while you're in distress of what you have to go through, I'm going to comfort you. And then along the way, you might get like Peter and start cussing just to prove that you're not with God. He said, no, I'm the sanctifier of your soul because your speech betray you. You try to cuss, but you cuss like a saint. You can't even cuss right because your soul has been sanctified and the Holy Spirit is not going to let no filthy communication come out of your mouth, but he's going to help you talk right. How many know that when you would to cuss, you just say, well, you know what, glory. Well, praise God. You know, well, thank you, Lord. You want to cuss, I thank you. Well, glory. You know you wanted to say, mother, flick, flick, shak, shak, I'll kick, out and the Holy Spirit said, don't say that. And you'd be like, ooh, Jesus. Or you're walking in, you walking through the dark and you stub your toe and you just want to cuss and you just, hallelujah, oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, you start speaking in tongues. That on on shot, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. How many has that happened to you before? You you want to, and you felt that thing. <laughs> well, the Holy Spirit helps you because he is the sanctifier of your soul. Your faith is the confidence that keeps your mind from wandering from the principles of God. Say that. I mean, just write that down. My faith is the confidence that keeps my mind from wandering from the principles of God. That's why uh, God told Joshua to end, these, end, end this law, I want you to meditate on it day and night. And not only meditate on them day and night, but observe to do them because it will keep your mind from wandering to do that which is sinful, but it will keep you honed in and focused on doing that which is good. That's where the Holy Spirit helps us because the Bible also said, he that keeps his mind stayed on him, he'll keep us in what? Perfect. Oh. So, your faith is the confidence that keeps your mind from wandering from the principles of God, keeps your heart from despair and weakness because it believes all the promises of God. But how can you know what the promises are if you don't know the word? Because faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. 
Your faith is, it grows by hearing your, you hearing yourself speak God's word over situations that come up in your life. You can't use what I, what I know over your life. It don't work for you. It only worked for me. That's why people, a lot of people get mad at the pastor when they don't get their, 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 their desires of their heart because they're trying to go on the pastor. Pastor, if you could just lay hands on me. No, the Bible said if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church. He didn't tell me if you want a job, come get the pastor to lay hands on you. No, he told you your faith has made you whole. Oh, I know y'all looking at me funny now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because y'all come to church and, you know, every now and then on the big four, Christmas, Mother's Day, Easter, and, and Thanksgiving Day prayer. And then you want to, you want, Pastor, can you pray for me? Did I get this house? No, I don't know the lifestyle you live. No, where is your faith? No, I agree with you according to your faith. Because you ain't going to get up mad at me. Well, and then, then you say, well, I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. No, your faith. It's your faith. We always want to punk out. Use that punk out line. Well, I guess it just wasn't the Lord's will for me to get there. No, you just didn't have to have the faith to accomplish your desires. No, oh, I know y'all don't like that. Because y'all trying to put the onus on God but he put the onus on you. He put the promises out there, but it's for you to walk in them. God ain't got, he can't walk in them for you and perform it. Well, God got to do this. God got, no, he, he, done, he done did everything when Jesus said, when Jesus died on the cross and he said, it is finished, now he, what he was saying, it's on you. Everybody want to blame Jesus. Well, I prayed and God didn't do it. Well, it, 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 let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Don't, let's not blame God because the promises of God are yes and amen. He said, before my word come back to me without it performing what I put it out there to do, this heaven and earth will pass away. God got too much to lose, but that's back in his word. So when y'all would start blaming God, well, I guess God, no, 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 no. Is heaven and earth still here? Uh, no, then it's on you. Think about that. When you go to blame God, just look around and see if the birds are still chirping. See if the wind is still blowing. The sun is still shining or the moon's still coming out at night. That'll let you know that it's on you because heaven and earth ain't passed away. Look at the sky. If the sky ain't falling, it's on you. <laughs> and God is saying, listen, listen, I am Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the beginning. And we act like what, what our prayers are news to God. Like God is getting a news flat. Oh, my daughter needs this. My son desires to have this. Y'all must be, y'all must think God is like us. He said, it is me that works both the will and the do. But, and it's always to my good pleasure. So, so God is, and then he said, it's, it's the, Jesus said, it's the father's good pleasure. To give you the keys to the kingdom. The keys don't mean that you got keys. That means you got the process. I'm going to give you the, the keys to get to be prosperous. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, that means I, well, I always got to give something. Well, as such as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you don't plant nothing, ain't nothing going to grow. Oh, okay. But then stop looking at God just to give to get something. Because he also said in everything, give thanks. For this is, real, this is my will. 
So you know what? You can get more out of thanking God, uh-oh, than giving him an offering. Uh, how you going to give money to somebody who has everything? God don't need your money. I know most pastors don't like when, when people say that. Yeah, well, uh, it, 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 it takes money to run the church. No, this is his house. This is his heritage. God will use a wino to come in here and bring everything that the church need at one whop. And then walk the wino will stagger right out, and you'll try to go and find him, and he'll be gone. God, you don't just have to have me. You don't just have to use me for your, for your kingdom to grow. But I'm glad that you are using me. I thank you that you are using me. I thank you that you chose me. I thank you that you use me to grow the kingdom. Herein is the Father glorified when we bear much fruit. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me move on. The shield also, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 and it also keeps your will from striving against the commandments of God. Hmm. Hmm. It keeps your will. The shield of faith keeps your will from striving against the commandments of God. It's like a governor. A governor. Your faith is like a governor. You know, here's the promises of God, but here's the desires of the flesh. Do I want to fulfill the desires of the flesh or fulfill the promises of God and get the desires of my heart? There's a difference between the desires of your heart and the desires of the flesh. Oh, uh, okay. So what, what your faith does, uh -huh, it keeps your will from striving against the commandments of God, but it keeps you pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It keeps you determined to do it God's way. Because God's way is the prosperous way. Because there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof, that way, is death and destruction. But when you press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus, you're going to get all the promises of God. Well, pastor, what are the promises of God? Well, to search the word. Mm, I ain't going to tell you. Gonna, no, search the word. The shield also quenches the burning arrows Satan shoots at your soul. You know, it's one thing to shoot an arrow at you, but when he wraps that arrow tip in cloth, dips it in gasoline, and then lights it on fire and shoots that arrow at your soul, whoo, that causes a lot of damage. Hmm, them fiery arrows. Because when they stick, they light you on fire. They don't just pierce you. Oh. They accelerate the pain with fire. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Either whether it's unholy thoughts or great trials of despair. Your faith makes the soul impenetrable because of your belief in the word of God and his promises. The enemy shoot an error, but it's your faith. What you believe in God is getting ready to do for you. And he's coming with an equivalent attack of, uh, of the energy you're putting forth what you believe in God is going to do. That's how he wraps that arrow up in fire. Because he said, uh-oh, your expectation is way up here. And this arrow, this arrow by itself won't be enough. So I'm going to wrap the tip in a cloth, dip it in some gasoline, and I'm going to light it on fire. Then I'm going to shoot it at you. Because I got to knock down your expectation. Because if you don't expect nothing, you ain't getting nothing. 
What did I say? If you don't expect nothing, you don't get nothing. If you don't expect the healing, you ain't getting no healing. Well, God, see, I, I, don't, I, I know it's a good song, but it's a good song without understanding. I'm not, I'm not the one to tell God, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. No, 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 no. Not me. No, 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 no. I'm very specific about what I desire from the Lord. Like David said, one thing that I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my, he was very specific. He didn't say, okay, Lord, whatever you got for me, I'll take it. No, 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 let me, because you said, if I delight myself also in you, that you would give me the desires, you would give me what I desire, not just anything in any way you bless me. No, I want what I want. But what I want is never going to be outside your will because your word is in me. And your word is a lamp into my feet and it lights my pathway. And the word illuminates my thoughts that I dare not think outside of your will. So, so I dare not think outside of your will. That means I'm not going to ask for anything. Uh, clap your hands right there. And give God some praise. Hmm. Now let's move down to the helmet. Let's move, move up to the helmet. The helmet of salvation protects the head, which, who? Who? It protects the head, which houses the soldier's mind and his ability to process the movement of the enemy. <laughs> Whoo! See, it's the brain that tell your eyes tell the brain something moving out there. And it's your brain processes. See, that's where discernment come in. See, something wrong with the believer today that don't operate in discernment. Y'all ought to know. Y'all ought to start. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Say that with me. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. I know we're first natural, but everything is spiritual. Everything, at the, the, the end of everything that we go through is spiritual. Though we go through it in the flesh, the end of it is spiritual. For the Bible clearly declares the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination that exalt itself against the will of God. I got to pull that down. Yes, I'm having temptations that go against the will of God. I got to cast that down. Why? Because it's spiritual. It's a physical fight, but for a spiritual ending. Because that the ending thereof is he's after my soul. He's after my mind. He's after my emotions. He's after my will. Hmm. So the helmet protects the head, which houses the soldier's mind and his ability to uh, process the movement of the enemy. Wearing the protection of the helmet, the soldier can hold his or her head up without fear of injury or harm. You know, when you're out there with no helmet trying to play football <laughs> and everybody else got a helmet on, you are very timid. You, hey, 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 you see I ain't got no helmet on. Hey, hey, I ain't in the play. Only a fool get up there. He trying to get in the play without everybody got on the helmet but him. There's, <laughs> Hey, 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 and that ain't even that ain't even wise. Even the referee is crap. Hey, hey, I, I, don't you go in there? Don't you? No, stay right here. No, it's a fumble. Don't you get in there? You ain't prepared. Some of y'all think that your your physical will help you spiritually. <laughs> Yeah, you, you go on and get your physical in a spiritual battle. You'll be like the seven sons of Sceva. 
be like, ooh, oh, oh, Paul said he na 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 ta ta ta. Well, let me go over there and try that. He na 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 ta ta ta. Who, who are you? Uh, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? You in a fight, <laughs> going in for the fumble with no helmet on. Get your behind toe up and sent out naked and embarrassed. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, t I'm telling you, you can't take no physical and enter into no spiritual warfare. So you got to have on your, you got to be saved to handle this word. You got to be saved to handle this anointing. You got to be, oh, y'all don't hear me? That's the problem with some of these pastors and, and some of, everybody want to be a bishop. Everybody want to be a prophet, but they don't want to be saved. But they trying to handle the word of God. Yeah, there were some brothers in the Bible that thought like that. Well, my daddy was a bishop. My daddy's a king. Yeah, Brother Hoffner, Brother Phineas. They thought because, oh, my daddy Eli, he's the king, so I'm operating the church. Yeah, I, I'm operating, uh-huh. We got a lot of Hophneas and Phineas out there because their daddy was a bishop. Their mama was an evangelist. Well, I'm just taking it up, too, because it was in the, it's the family business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when the glory comes and the glory recognizes that you ain't supposed to be handling this word, Huh. It unleashes the hellhounds on you. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The other parts of the armor are defensive parts, but the sword is both offensive and defensive. Write that down. The sword of the spirit is to be used both offensively and defensively. It's to be used to cut because it's what? Sharper than any two-edged sword? <laughs> uh, it is the word of God that cuts through all of the disguises of sin. Oh, yeah, the disguises. Folks come in prettied up, and they, they, they've been churched, but they haven't been saved. They know how to shout. They know how to speak in tongues. They can sing. <laughs> but when the word comes, it cuts away all those disguises. They get convicted. I ain't going back to that church. The pastor always talking about me. All he doing is preaching the word. But you blame the pastor. Somebody done told that man what I was doing last night. I ain't never going back there. Yeah, you invited me to that church, to your church, but you done told the pastor how I get down. No, the word cuts through all your disguises <laughs> and lays to rest all of the wiles or the lies of the devil. The word is the offensive weapon against temptation, against pride, against hatred, against worldliness, against unbelief, and every device that Satan can bring against you. And here's how you recognize the word, how, how you recognize a true sword. Because on the handle, it's going to always be stamped. It is written. See, when you pull out your sword, a lot of folks be up there. Uh, hold on. Let me see that handle. If it don't say it is written, uh, they have a form of godliness. But they did. Uh-oh. Huh. <laughs> it is written. It is clearly stamped on the handle of the sword. It is called the sword of the spirit because God is the altar. God is the interpreter. And he who made it effective, made it effective enough to defeat every strike 
of the enemy. God interprets the word. You just think you got all this, this great knowledge? God is the one. He's the, he's the giver of revelation. We have no natural thought of our own because all good things come from the, down from the Father of lights. I know you thought, yeah, I thought that up. No. Mm -mm. We don't have no original thoughts. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing that man has created. I don't blame Apple. I wouldn't create a back door for the government to use against us. They lazy. Want everybody else to, no, get, get a breakthrough. Go in your prayer closet and ask God to give us a back door to get into this phone. That's how y'all think. Pastor, can you pray for me? I, got, I need a breakthrough. Well, what's wrong with your life? Y'all just like the government trying to get in Apple to open that terrorist phone. <laughs> I, just, I just want God to, well, your lifestyle don't show it. You living a life of compromise that don't show that you, you want God to, his promises to just flourish in your life. No. You want a microwave. You, want, you don't want to do no work. That's why y'all still saying, God, just, God got to do this for me. Jesus already told y'all it's finished. <laughs> he ain't sitting, he ain't raining down no more manna from heaven. He ain't parting no more Red Seas. It's finished. But then he said, here's what I love about Jesus. He said, greater works. Greater works. He didn't say greater works I'm going to do for you. Or did he? Is that what the Bible said? Greater works that I'm going to do for you? Or did he say greater works than these will you do? Why? Because I got to get up and go to my father. I can't be here with y'all. But I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send another comforter. He's going to help you. He's going to guide you in the way that you can achieve everything you set out to do. Because I want you to know I got too much to lose for my word to come back without performing what I set out to do. I got the heaven and earth to lose. And I love my creation. I ain't about to lose it. I encourage you to on your own time study the word of God. The Bible clearly declares that we should Study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. I want God to say, this is my son and I approve his life. Because when he's approving my life, that opens the window of heaven for blessings to come down upon me. For he also said, I know the plan I have for you. It's a plan of prosperity. Faith, tonight we're praying for you that your faith fail you not. In the midnight hour, it is the Holy Spirit that will comfort you in your time of despair. Sometime we tell God we want to get up out of here. I'm ready to leave. This pressure is too much. But think about Jesus on the cross. He didn't come down. He didn't come down. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. But I want to tell you, my room ain't ready for me yet. It ain't ready. They still putting the finishing touches on it. So I got time. It might be a day. But the day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So in a thousand years is as a day. So who going to justify to God how much time we got down here? Don't let your faith fail you. Put on your whole armor. 
and go through and press toward the mark of the prize. God, we thank you and we praise you always for you always make known unto us what you desire of us. Now, God, let the word of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. You're our Lord, our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. God, we believe that you're able, for all power is in your hands. You're undefeatable. None can defeat thee, none in the heavens or the earth or even beneath the earth. And we're thine. We're the sheep of your pasture. And you said if we delight ourselves also in you, that you will give us the desires of our heart and you would bring it to pass. Meaning we will see it in our lifetime. Not only will we imagine, but that which we imagine will manifest and glorify your name, both now and forever. Every heart said, amen. Now clap your hands and give him praise.